the Guy Shannon and Clint podcast. Hello, Shanice, there, Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Guy Sharon and Clint. Shan Yeezy Yo's here. Clint Yeezy Yo. Oh, God, I won't even try. Clint's here. And, uh, Clint Yeezy I'm- Yo sounds like a guy who makes homemade yogurt. <laughs> Don't even act like you weren't here to talk to me today. And I'm here as well. We got, we got stuck on it. We, we could record this after we finished our radio show. And we got stuck on a bit of a tangent when um, Sharon pulled out a quote from Buddha, which I'm skeptical of whether it was actually from Buddha because it was one of those dubious ones where it's, it sounded more like a Simpsons joke than anything else. But anyway, that wasn't the point. The point is that it sparked oh, okay. a bit of a... okay, just a backhanded compliment. A, it wasn't a backhanded compliment. It was a full-on um, a full-on criticism. Diss. Yeah. Okay, thanks. There was no... Well, what part of that was a compliment? Anyway. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to give my feedback after we've done this. Do feedback to me. Okay. Do it. Do it. <laughs> You mean you're so, big, uh, you're a meanie. Hey, take a shot. What about my glasses? I like your glasses, and I've got a big head as well. Um, I like how you check yourself out in the window. Anyway, so when we're doing you're the like portion, the, mate, don't criticize yourself too much. <laughs> when we're doing the um, when we're doing the uh, religious chat, it actually got quite it got quite heated because um, Clint is known as being a <laughs> hater of religion, according quote Shaz dog. So that got me thinking. Which is Sharon's summation of me, by the way, not my own. No, the only reason I said that is because every time anyone talks about religion, and I quote, you have said this before, fuck religion. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> it it yeah, does have yeah. a track record. I remember when Parachute, it was found out that Parachute was um, clo- uh, closing down, and someone came into the office and announced it because it was huge news for the Edge, because it was like a big event for our audience and stuff like that. And, uh, and it, it, someone came in and goes, hey guys, Parachute is closing down. And Clint went, Woohoo! I'm like, why are you celebrating? And, he's going, and he was like, because it's another chink in Jesus' armor. <laughs> I can't believe you remember that. Good call. It was, it was funny, but at the same time, I'm like, whoa, 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 hold back. So it got me thinking, Clint, is it true that you were um, put off for religion by your time at a religious high school? <laughs> That's it, eh? Yeah, yeah. Did someone. You, no. You, no, 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 no. I wasn't referring to that. No. I feel, oh, I feel bad. Because uh, you know, it's so bad with you though that if I'm in a group situation and someone brings up religion, I start feeling really hot because I feel like it's about. I'm going to say something offensive. I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. it's going to start getting awkward. Soon. It's a tricky one. It's one of those ones you don't bring up at the dinner table. Uh, because it's like sex or politics, yes. it's always going to divide and people. Money. It's going to tear people apart. Yeah. So it's good. We've got a, um, we've got a good a good smattering of people on the show. We've got Clint, who's an atheist; Sharon, who's open to all religions and loving; and me, who's like a saint pretty much, and probably <laughs> going to definitely go to whatever heaven I like because I'm so well behaved. <laughs> Coming up on the podcast today... Go to the one with the goats and the virgins, man. That sounds like the best one. Coming up on the podcast today, we have amazing acoustics from Jeremy Redmore. We have... Pie Connoisseurus. Should we put that in the pod? Is it really worth putting that in the podcast? Yep. Yeah, that's yep. a, yeah, everyone likes hearing about pies. And we have some real cool stories coming up as well. So enjoy, um, for your listening pleasure, our podcast. Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. I went on a trip yesterday, guys. No, not yesterday. Saturday. Hey. Sorry. Ooh, where'd you go? It feels like yesterday because it was so much fun. I went to the beautiful Mystery Creek near Hamilton. And it wasn't a mystery. I went there for field days. Ah. And for me, for some people might be like, oh, give us a break, mate. Everyone goes to field days. Um, for me, being from the South Island, I had no idea what field days was. Basically, if you're not aware, it's like erotica, but for farmers. <laughs> it's like Disneyland for farmers. It's a fantasy land where they have tractors and tractor races and tractor pulling. It's basically a lot of tractor-based stuff. Yeah. I went to the field days when I used to live in Timaru down yeah. that way once, and I bought a herding stick and I <laughs> bought a Rottweiler puppy for fifteen dollars. You bought a puppy? Yeah, and I like bought it. I picked up and I remember walking back in my gummits to my dad's tent uh, where his business was. And I was like, Dad. Check out Harold, I bought a dog! And you made me um, take it back, didn't you? Of course you? you did. You can't just go buy it. What kind of irresponsible pet vendor sells a child a Rottweiler? That's amazing. A Rottweiler dealer who, who, who wants to make some money? A Rottweiler it was dealer. A, it was the first time I ever heard the word bitch, too. Because I said, what sort of it? And he said, he said it's a bitch. And um, Dad was like, what sort of uh, dogs? And I go, it's a bitch, Dad. And it was the first time I'd ever heard that word. Wow. And so you didn't even know it was a swear word. And fair enough, it's not if you're referring to a female dog. Now, um, it was one of those bizarre situations where I met people that I've never met before because it is really rural. Like, you run into people who are literally like, G'day, how's it going? 
And I'm like, <laughs> that can't be a real voice. You can't talk that low. Yeah. And then I'll be like, what's your name? They'll be like, Barry. I'm like, your name can't be Barry. You are a caricature of a farmer right now. <laughs> and I did everything. I did the tractor pulling. I um, I did uh, sheep uh, dog herding, although I didn't have a dog. That was quite annoying. So I just had to herd the sheep by myself. <laughs> Were you the dog? I was the dog. Um, I did uh, I did. Do uh, you share a sheep? No, nah, I didn't get to do that. Sad. Did you stick your hand up a cow's bum? Oh, I wish I, I... That would have been an opportunity not to be missed. Then it really would have been like erotica. Here's a stat that'll blow your mind. It was quite funny the way the lady told it to me. But she was like, do you know that yesterday, on Friday, we had more people through field days, it's bigger, than the population of Nelson? And I thought she was having a go because I'm from Nelson. I was like, are you saying that because I'm from Nelson? And she was like, no. And I was like, how many people from Nelson? And I was like, uh, 45,000? She was like, no, well, more than that, no matter what. And she was like, 41,000. <laughs> and I was like, no, that's less than the number I just said, but anyway, I like the fact. <laughs> Coming back from Subway, I got into... Okay, sorry, shivers. I'm Freudian slip there. Coming back from field days, though, guys, I had a bit of an awkward situation. This, you never want this to happen in your life. I got told off. Where? Was it at Subway? At Subway, okay. as, I just, as I alluded to earlier. Yeah. I got told off at the Subway vending machine. Apparently, there was a sign there, and I went in for a refill of my cup, and I just got a lady saying, Ah, excuse me. Excuse me, what do you think you're doing? I turn around, caught red-handed. I've got a cup half full of my second refill of Coke. Yeah. And she made me pour it out. Piss off. In That's front, such a waste. In front of my mates, in front of my friends, in front of my <laughs> boss, I was humiliated. I walked back to the weird van that we drive around in, in humiliation. It it's, felt like I was at primary school. There's nothing worse than being told off by an adult, and like as an adult, by an adult. It's just the worst yeah. And I reckon it would happen to not just you, but happen to a whole lot of adults that are listening right now. Yeah. Someone texted in and said they manage a subway. Yeah. And they, no one can charge you for a refill. It's a subway policy that you must have free refills. So next time I'm on a subway, I'm going to, which is probably tomorrow because I love subway, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to shebang them back with that super stat. I got, I got told off as an adult at Rainbow's End. Why? At the log flume? For lurking around like a wet, For, creepy I'm gonna, pedo? I'm going to guess, is it rocking the log? Yeah. You are that guy. <laughs> but taken naughty. aside as an adult man <laughs> and said, look, mate... <laughs> the logs are not for rocking like that. And I was in front of a whole bunch of kids. It was school holidays. What and I was loser. kicked off the log flow. What a loser. I'm actually guilty as I approach 30 in a few years. I've started becoming an old woman, and I've actually become the person that tells off other adults. <laughs> and also in a subway, because I think people get ragey in subways because it takes people so long to make decisions of what source combo they want and stuff, that I told off someone else's kid for um, being rude to their dad. And I was like, well, oh, you're lucky you've been getting a subway with how rude you are being to your father. You don't know how lucky you are. Oh, my God. You parented someone else's yeah. kid. And the guy looked at me like, thank you, because it was the biggest brat I'd ever come across <laughs> in my life. He was having a tantrum. There was no white bread left. But honestly, I was the raging adult. Fair enough. <laughs> hey, Emma, where were you told off as an adult? I was told off at the gas station this morning by oh. the attendant because I was on my cell phone. Oh, and what did he say? Did he give you the full lecture or was he just like, turn that bloody thing off? He was just like, hey, you can't be on your cell phone out here. And I, I didn't even know that. I didn't know you couldn't be on your yeah. cell phone on the forecourt. <laughs> yeah, because it can, it can somehow trigger an explosion on the forecourt. It's one of those mystery yeah. things that apparently, apparently cell phones so. can do. Like how they can bring down planes and that sort of thing. Never been proved, yeah. but apparently, just I, in case. I had no idea that my cell phone was that good. Like, don't get me wrong, <laughs> it's a pretty good cell phone, but I didn't know I could blow up a petrol station yeah. with it. Well, you never no, know. me neither. Me neither. <laughs> Guy, Sharon. And Clint on the urge. I just wanted to ask how the naked guys were on the weekend. Oh, is that directed at me? That's directed at you, naked guy from, hanger out or with. From the nude rugby, the nude test match? Yeah, so the, there was the nude blacks game we were talking about. It happened over the weekend where the New Zealand nude rugby team took on the English nude rugby team. And I've seen some pictures on Instagram from this, Clint, and I think we need to talk about what happened. We, it was a lot of fun. There was a few thousand people come down to watch. Everyone's a mixture of um, sort of giggly and nervous at the same time. Yeah. Um, but it was fun. It was good fun. We'll set the record straight first. Uh, the, the Nude Blacks won, so our patriotic um, uh, record is intact. Do you know the only time the Nude Blacks have ever lost was to a woman's invitational team? Uh, and they lost in the World Cup year. They lost to a woman's wow. team. Wow. Weird. Um, it's weird, though. Like I can it's, imagine. It's a weird concept. It's 
the the people that organise it have been doing it for fifteen years now, yeah. and it's a big tradition in Dunedin. But they are so into nudity. Obviously, you would be with the nude rugby, but it's so nude for so long. Yeah, because th- was royalty there? Because I saw a picture of a whole lot of naked dudes, and then there was like a king and queen. Oh, on the so sideline. they got they got a um, they got an imitation king and prin- uh, queen and Prince Philip to come down and meet oh. the nude teams. But this is how it goes, and this is the order of nudity for the day. So the teams come out nude from the stands and warm up on the field for five minutes. What? And then they go back into the sheds and then the teams come out nude again and they're met by the Queen. The Queen meets the nude players, gives a speech in front of the nude players. Then the nude players get on their hands and knees and the Queen checks their boots, checks their sprigs, even though they're not wearing any. <laughs> they do that nude. They're on their hands and knees nude. This is so awkward. Oh, my God. Then they get up and stand in a line in front of the crowd and they sing the national anthem nude. And then they sing the other national anthem nude. God. And then... Uh, they've been out here for about 10 or 15 minutes by now. They each go off to their respective sides. The New Zealand team does the hucker nude with all the bits flapping around. And then the English team respond to the hucker by singing Swing Low Sweet Chariot nude. Yeah. And then finally, after about 20 minutes, the first nude tackle is made when the game kicks off. Gross. So it's so strange. And one of the big questions that we had was when they played the game, do they tape up their little soldiers? No. So no. they just flap it around. Some guys chose to wear headgear to protect their ears, um, and then they had socks on. But other than that, everything's just flapping left, right, and up and down. My main question is, and I wonder if you ask this, Clint. Mm. Why are they doing this? <laughs> There's one guy who is in the team who has played every single game, and he's the captain of the Nude Blacks. Yeah. Is he straight? Yeah, yeah, he is, because at half time he ran over to the side. There were no women playing. He ran over to the side and found some girls and was like, come on, come play the game. Get your kid off. Get naked with us. Come play the rugby. We need some uh... girls. We need some help on the team. Oh, you don't have to take your undies off. Just get your boobs out. Just run around with your boobs out. Come on. They didn't play, and then he went back onto the field. He was so keen to be nude. He was nude an hour before the game started. I oh, my think, goodness. Because I, 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 that's what I think. I think... Um, if you ask them, why are you doing this nude rugby? They would say, it's because we want to show some people our wangers <laughs> and we're not allowed to do it normally and we get arrested around schools normally. And it seems like the spectators, were they quite boozy? Because you'd have to be boozy to be at that sort of situation because if you saw the streaker that ran across the yeah. All Blacks field on Saturday night... He had been previously at the Nude Blacks game with his mates. I don't think he'd played, but yeah. It no, was, he, he wasn't playing. He yeah. was one of the drunken spectators in the weird. Nude Blacks. It was fun. We won, but yeah, it was as weird as you think it would be. Kia Kaha, New Zealand Nude Blacks. <laughs> nude Blacks. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge. I've got a little predicament at the moment, and I need the help mm-hmm. of our mm. listener friends and also you males. You've come to the right place. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I'm off on holiday next Thursday and going over to Mexico with my husband. Yeah. And I don't really want to wear a bikini and I don't want to sound like a like whingy girl or anything. But I just don't feel comfortable. Why not? Because I just don't feel like that amazing about my body and having... And, and you look beautiful, Sharon. And, to be, uh, and, and where we're going, it's going to be all these hot Brazilian girls. And my, so my husband's already going to be like... Following around hot models all day. You mean Mexican girls in Mexico? No, no, no. There's a whole lot of Brazilian people like go over there, and the, the, my friend was just there. Okay. Why would you leave Brazil of, at the moment, though? But. There's a, a whole lot of people over there, and okay. she just said it's like surrounded by models. I'm like, well, I don't want to sit there being the girl who's like. Mate, you're walking out of winter too. It's not exactly a bikini season here. So exactly. What's... So I don't want to wear a bikini, and so I've been looking online and going on shopping. It's really hard to find one that doesn't look like you're 50 um, to find one piece swimming suit. And I thought because like. You know, celebrities wear them now that they were cool. Yep. But my husband um, was like, what are you looking at one-piece swimsuits for? And I was like, well, because I don't really want to wear a bikini there. Let's call him. Let's sort this out right now, right here, live on air. <laughs> let's do it. Hello? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Where are you ringing from? From work. Oh, ah, um, Didn't know that number. Um... I'm just looking on the Rip Your website, and I'm down to a bikini or a one piece. What do you reckon I should get? Do you, do you, would you prefer if I got a bikini or a one piece? Is this for radio? No, I'm just asking. Aren't you on air? No. Who knows? Here you are. <laughs> Who knows? It's a mystery. Just be honest. <laughs> bikini or... That is, the lame, that is the lamest effort ever. Bikini or one <laughs> piece? What should Why I get? Why is it the lamest effort ever? Screw you, Bryce. <laughs> it's the worst... 
You guys are battling, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Bryce, we heard you're a misogynist, mate, and you won't let Sharon wear a one-piece. <laughs> you guys are battling hard, eh? <laughs> Bryce, answer the question, mate. Stop trying to push you out of it. He's laughing it off because I told you I was right. We're, we're a singlet and panties. <laughs> no, that's not one of the options. <laughs> that's not the option. That's disgusting. You're a, you don't want to see your wife and, and get all wet like that. That's just that's a hot way. That sounded bad. What I meant to say is, <laughs> Bryce, why can't she yeah. wear a one-piece? Um... She can wear whatever she wants, mate. No, you, you're, you're just saying you're that because you're on air. You're a coward, mate. <laughs> uh, Have we got you in a bit of an awkward situation here, Bryce? No, not at all. Just, <laughs> um, look, I, I'd, I'd prefer a bikini, yes. That's the answer. Thank you. We got it from him yeah. in the end. Yeah. But why? Okay. What's the point of... Um, well, even cause if, they look Because they look better. That's why. Even if I have better cleavage in a one-piece than a two-piece... What is what is guy? Be honest, actually, guy. Uh, you're no, not you, Clint. What would you prefer? <laughs> yeah, if we're being completely honest, Why Bryce, not me? I'm with you, mate. She should be going for a bikini all day. Y- yeah, thank yeah. you, Clint. Um, <laughs> Can I just say? Sharon, I'll see you later. Oh, guy, I'll see you later, mate. See, see you later, and don't insult me like that again. For the record, I, I would like a, um, a body glove, uh, one piece wetsuit. That's my <laughs> that's my preference. <laughs> Stay sun smart, guys. See, see, they didn't. So, uh, we solved it. He's sweet. No, he wants me to wear a bikini, but I want. I don't feel comfortable wearing a bikini, and I would rather wear a one piece. So now it's like, do I wear the one piece and know that my husband doesn't think that's hot, or do I just grin and bear it and wear the bikini, just no. so that he's happy? Make him happy. He's going on holiday. Just wear the bikini for him. Somebody help me, Christina. What are your thoughts? Um, I reckon, I'm sorry, I'm siding with the bikini because, I don't know, one piece would just remind me of old ladies doing aqua aerobics. <laughs> but, what if, what but, if I find a cool one? Oh, to me, I, just, I don't think there's no cool one piece. But what you could oh. go with one... Well, what if, what if you don't? What if you go with one of those like um, kind of singlet bikini tops with the bikini bottom? Oh, oh yeah. I yeah. think Bryce. I think Bryce just wants to see a bikini. I think. <laughs> I think. I think he's 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 bought a ticket to Mexico. He wants a bit of belly button action. Not well, like that. But he's like. not going to be looking at me anyway with all like the hot girls roaming around. Well, that's we'll take that one on board. Tessa, what do you think? I think you should get a really sexy one piece and don't let him sex you. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Don't let him sex you. I actually really like the idea of that one. That'll teach him. He, he's, yeah. he's my husband. He's supposed to be like, you look beautiful no matter what you wear. But I found exactly. out once you get married, they're way more honest, Tessa. <laughs> that's, that's no good. Damn it. Okay, I, I think I might have to go with what Tessa says, but we'll see what, what other people think as well. I'm not married, but it shouldn't be a commodity to withhold. Like, you sh- is, Do you barter with it? Is it like a... No, nah, but I don't know. If I, I, I don't want to wear a bikini. If, if I wear a bikini, <laughs> if I wear a bikini and I'm going to be around these like ridiculously hot girls all day with their perfect bodies, I, the last thing I'm going to want to be doing is getting naked so that my husband can see me flop around everywhere. <laughs> Uh, someone in the text machine has suggested a burka. Sharon, you open to that? <laughs> yep, that's probably the best option. That's to be good honest. revenge. That's good revenge. And, then look- and it only shows my eyes too, and that's my best feature. Sharon, all of you is your best feature. You're beautiful, mate. So, hello. What are your thoughts? Um, no, I still think she should be in a sexy bikini. A sex? Why a sexy bikini? Oh, I don't know, you gotta, you gotta, I don't know what's going on on there. I don't know what's going on Here, in there. Here's, so. a, here's a good comment um, uh, to back that up. Um, someone's texted and said, if your man thinks you look better in a bikini, take his word for it, because you must look good, and that's what he wants, so wear it with pride. Hey, there's a positive spin. Yeah, but, nah. I, to be <laughs> honest, I've got a whole different angle on why he's going for this. You already own bikinis. I've just seen the price of the swimsuits that you're looking at. I think he's doing it from a budgeting perspective and just doesn't want you to <laughs> spend material. any more money. But I'm going to be a Mexico. I'm going to want to be drinking. I don't want to get people looking at me being like, why is the pregnant girl drinking and drinking all those beers? Hey, why don't you cut a deal? If, if, she, if you have to wear a bikini, he has to wear a Speedo. That's a great idea. That would solve it, right? That, that would is a great idea. Whatever you feel comfortable with, Sharon, I reckon that's the correct answer. Next. Whatever you want to do. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Legend tells of a great creature that roamed the plains. Going from servo to servo in a quest to find the perfect pie. No mince and cheese spared. No bacon and egg neglected. Now... Joining us live from the brink of extinction, the last of his kind, he is Pi Connoisseur. He 
He's in the studio. He is a connoisseur of meat pies. Pie Connoisseuros is here. And what pie are you reviewing this week? Uh, today is a boutique pie from a boutique bakery. Uh, it's a steak, cheese, and chili. Okay, well, g- give it a give it a wee munch. He's chewing now. He's chewing loudly. But fancy. Pie. Connoisseur. Connoisseur. That was appalling. <laughs> He's just walked out. Boo. It's, it's literally it. That was Pie Connoisseur. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. There is a new craze, everybody. It's to do with selfies, and it's oh. called... A snelfie. Jesus, I'm already, I'm already not interested. What is it, mate? You take a lot of selfies. You, yeah, you're I the do. king of selfies. You're the one that always says to us, "Oh, can can you use my phone? I need to be cool and do a vine." Okay, I've actually I reversed. I rever- since you guys have pointed out that I'm a massive hypocrite, <laughs> I have reversed my opinion, and uh, I'm now more into it. What the hell is a snelfie? I still don't know. There has been a whole lot of different selfies. The after sex selfie was probably the worst. That is bad. But I quite like the snelfie because it reminds me of when everyone used to do jelly fishing, which is when you um, or you'd take a photo and you're going like this, and you'd get a hilarious photo. So a snelfie is a selfie that you take while you're sneezing. Ew! And it is the funniest face afterwards. If you look up snelfies on Instagram, there's a hashtag going around about it. It's just the funniest photo that you could see. Quite unhygienic. Mm. Like yes. if you and if you don't have a waterproof phone, potentially quite damaging. Yeah, definitely. It's it just took me back to when everyone used to do the jellies, and it was the funniest. I'm just looking selfie. up this Snelfy hashtag. Who now. invents this? Who thinks this is a good idea? <laughs> I don't know, but it's quite funny. I feel like I could be if this is good. I feel like I could be an internet genius. I've just invented a falfy, which a is falfie? when you fart into a selfie at the same time. <laughs> Or a, it's um, not as good because you don't get the morphed face that you get with a snelfie. Oh, um, actually, it's pretty good. With a snelfie, you get like a morphed looking face, and you can, and it's just classic. So, yeah. what we want to do is we want to collect your snelfies and make a gallery of them on our Facebook page. So, take one tonight and go to facebook.com forward slash edge afternoons and take a picture. <laughs> Sorry. You could have done one right there. Do it right now. Take no, one right now. Get Take one right now. Get it right Get it right I'm not sneezing. I'm coughing. Oh, um, same thing, mate. That's Cal- a Kelfie. That's a Kelfie. <laughs> So let's, so let's get straight. I take a photo of myself sneezing. Yep. And then put that onto our Facebook page. Yes. Facebook.com forward slash Edge Afternoons. The best snelfie will win a Guy, Sharon and Clint prize pack. And we will make a gallery on our Facebook page of the best ones as well. How do you make yourself sneeze? Is it pepper? Yes. Pepper or tickle under your nose. Yeah. Or sniff a cat if you're allergic to them. Yep, what? sniff a cat. What's in a guy Sharon and Clint p- prize pack? I'm very intrigued. CD, DVD, music, tickets, a whole cool. lot of stuff. Cassette Magazines. Tapes. Uh, um, a personalised note from me. Yeah. Can nope. I do that? A nope. VHS my contribution. of Guy's first school p- um, pantomime. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that adds to the prize, but we'll chuck it in. Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. Ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the studio, direct from the store that sells sweet as velvet jackets. Nice jacket, by the way. The wonderful, the amazing Jeremy Redmore. Yay! Yay! Oh, there it is. Yay! Welcome. That's, intros just can't be beat. No, Thank you. that's what we're campaigning on. That's all you point at him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hey, we have to tell him when to do it, otherwise he forgets <laughs> and he just sits there. My brain doesn't work that good sometimes. He only, it, he only speaks if we point at him. See, look, if we point at him now, if we don't point at him, and then. Oh, I'm ready to go. Uh, So, by the way, Jeremy, it's not all about me. Congratulations on the success of your first song, um, Bad Philosophy. Thank you very much. You smashed it out the park, mate. Yeah, it's been um, it's been a very pleasant surprise. It's been awesome. And you've been working very hard on your new album, and it's is it scary doing an album by yourself when you've usually been in a band situation? It's so scary and so stressful too, because I was producing most of it myself as well, managing the whole process. So wow, it was um, it was kind of horrible but awesome what, why, is it, why is it horrible is there a deadline oh there's deadlines and you've got to organise musicians and oh no not organising musicians yeah I know yeah. And, and and there's money and, and you know, yeah. there's so much uncertainty in terms of um, you, you spend all this money you don't know if you're going to get any of it back so yeah. 
<laughs> it's almost like making a movie in a way. Like exactly, like, yeah. yeah. Did you do it like Dave Grohl after um, Nirvana broke up and he went and played all the instruments by himself and produced the record by himself? Did you do the oh, whole mate. thing by yourself after Midnight Youth? I wish I could do that, but yeah. um, and I, I can basically play a little bit of guitar and a little bit of piano, and that's about it. And I'm, I'm not one of these people who insists on playing everything myself. If there's someone who can play it better than me, yeah, they do it. I'll just say right now, pretty good on the triangle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, next album, mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do, do, because I've never been on a record. That's, cool. That's a good idea. When mm. it comes, because now you're by yourself instead of being in a band, you don't have the the person that's in the studio or whatever straight away to be like, nah, 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 that's bad. Who do you use now to put fresh ears on your music to tell you whether or not it's good or if it's bad? Just my dad. Just dad? <laughs> Are you joking? Is that genuine? <laughs> well, no, that, uh, that's not. Really, yeah, it's pretty true. Like, there, there's not that many people who who I share the songs with, and he's one of them. Is he a musician? He he's pretty similar to me. Yeah. <laughs> what does okay. he What does he do for a, a day job? Um, he's um, semi-retired fireman. A fireman. Wow. Listen to your music. That is amazing. Fireman Phil. Oh so wow. So, with that kind of critique on the new record, would fireman enjoy oh, the yeah. new album? <laughs> Real working man. Do you album. think this is an album for the firemen of New Zealand? Of Volunteer firemen as well? Yeah, there's a lot of blood and sweat in there, mate. There you go. Good. Worried. Okay, there's an audience ready for you already. <laughs> um, yeah. That's quite cool. And because the album is quite eclectic, so does that mean that your dad's a bit all over the shop with his music taste? <laughs> He's like, no, I don't like that one, Jeremy, but I really well, like this one. Well, no, we're giving yes, your dad is. too much credit. I've cut, the last two times I've gone back to the family home, the first time he was listening to Forest Bird Noises. Yeah. The next time it was Muse. What? Like, loud. Amazing. That is awesome. At least he's got good taste. My dad only listens to Abba and Charlie Pride. <laughs> oh, I had that when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're in here today because we are getting the world exclusive. World exclusive. World, world exclusive. exclusive. World exclusive. Radio premiere and world exclusive. World, world exclusive. World exclusive. World exclusive. Acoustic performance of your brand new single, Run Run. Yeah. You played a little clip to us while we were like in the air break just before. It's very, very different to Bad Philosophy. It is. It's a totally different vibe. So you mentioned Eclectic before. So this is there's probably two scales in the album, and these are these two songs are, <laughs> that are from one end to the other. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's fun, you know. Yeah. That's how I write songs, and I, I don't write to a to a script and a, to a f- one feeling. You know, the, if the way it comes out is the way it comes out. I just try and treat the, the melodies and the music yeah. the best that, that it can be. Cool, man. All right. Well, are you ready to go now? Do yeah, you want to play the song for us right now? So. This is a very acoustic version of it. Cause yeah. It's got a bit, a bit of a rock vibe to it, really. Yeah, and one more time, what's it called? It's called Run Run. All right, check it out. World exclusive. World exclusive, world exclusive on the edge. I got a feeling it's about to end this time. I've seen you fighting and the sink's about to fly. Hold your arms out, give me a sign. Put your hands up, love is on the line She wasn't usher on the local movie floor He wasn't anything, anything at all But she thought she could make him grand Be the prince that she wanted, hold her hand Wish you would just run, 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 baby Till there's no one no one coming, there's a lot to lose When it's up to you Just run, 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 baby Till there's no one, no one following It's all on you Make it straight and true Was the daughter of a tycoon tennis star Nothing was good enough to satisfy by far She married young, she married clean But he was always after just one thing She wasn't looking when the bank account went dry He told his family he would learn to fly And the plane went down in the sea Never recovering the body or the money you would just run, 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 baby, till there's no one, no one coming. There's a lot to lose when it's up to you. Just run, 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 baby, till there's no one, no one following. It's all on you. Make it straight and true.
Got a feeling it's about to end this time I've seen you fighting and the sink's about to fly Hold your arms out, give me a sign Give me a sign Run, 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 baby 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 That is the first time a world exclusive, world exclusive, exclusive world, world exclusive, exclusive world performance exclusive. of that song. And Jeremy, do you know how we can tell in the studio if you do a really, yeah. really good acoustic? Don't mention this again. I don't know. If you do a really good acoustic <laughs> on the Guy Sharon and Clint show, you'll hear Clint and I trying not to laugh during your performance because Guy Williams is leaning back in his chair <laughs> with his arms folded, his head leaning back. With a big smile on his face, with his eyes shut. I was having a good time. He takes himself to his happy place with the performance song, and that is exactly what happened during your performance. (laughs) Yes, Yes. great text message coming straight away as well. That was amazing. You should give me a copy of his album. It's amazing. Beautiful song. That's from Jess. There you go. Oh, thanks very much. Some live feedback for you. We've got some fans on the phone as well. Natalie, did you want to say something to Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, that was... Absolutely beautiful. I'm almost crying. It was so lovely. I, I went into a heavy place like Guy did as well. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. So, Jeremy, when when is your album or going to be out, or when's that song going to be on iTunes? Uh, it's on iTunes on Friday, um, and the album's out July 25, so not too Woo! long, actually. Yeah, it's, nice. it's real close. There you, go. Scary. there you go, Natalie. You'll be able to go pick it up on Friday. Definitely. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You're cool. Also got Melissa on the line. Melissa, you're on with Jeremy. Wow. <laughs> that, that was oh my god that was so awesome it's gonna be my new favorite song oh thanks Aww. Melissa yeah cheers well, that's some good that, was, that is just so awesome <laughs> well, I haven't done live feedback before this is crazy it, yeah, can, well, it can go bad it, it, yeah, it yeah, can sure, yeah. and it has gone bad before <laughs> here we go come on yeah. no no it's all positive so far that's our last caller <laughs> ladies and gentlemen Still in the studio, direct from not going anywhere, the wonderful, the amazing Jeremy Redmore! Now, we issued a challenge to Jeremy just before, the same challenge that we issued to Ed Sheeran when he was here. It's yet to be titled, but we like to call it the Covers Challenge, where we get you to do a cover of a song that is on the Edge playlist. So when Ed Sheeran was here, he did Lord's Royals. In your love affair, we'll never be royals. Don't run in our blood The kind of luck's just same for us We crave a different kind of buzz And that kind of went viral, it was okay I mean, it's just Ed Sheeran yeah, doing well, the biggest yeah. song of the year So no, no big no, deal or anything No, no pressure, no pressure But yeah. Jeremy, we gave you the challenge before Are you accepting the I Edge am. cover challenge? <clears throat> I am, I am I just got to clear my throat a bit But yeah, I'm going to be good What What song are you going to go for? I'm going to go for All of Me by John Legend Ooh, a big one, it's a big one It's a big song Do we want to make it a bit more epic than it is? Hang on Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay here, here, we here, go, here, here we go, here we go Here we go the guy, Sharon and Clint, yet to have an official title, Cover Challenge. Today, starring Jeremy Redmore. This what? week, my... Oh, sorry. Oh, were, you doing, were you doing a version of Jeremy Redmore? No, I was trying to do it like stars <laughs> in their eyes with the person would come on and be like, This week, Matthew, I'm going to be John Legend. Good luck, Jeremy. <laughs> it's been a weird intro so <laughs> far. Nothing to add. But we're ready for the song. Books. All right. <clears throat> What would I do without your smart mouth Drawing me in and you're kicking me out Got my head spinning, no kidding I can't pin you down What's going on in that beautiful mind I'm on your magical mystery ride And I'm so dizzy, don't know what hit me But I'll be alright my head's underwater, 
but I'm breathing fine. You're crazy and I'm a little out of my mind. 'Cause all of me loves all of you, love your curves and all your edges. All your perfect imperfections, give your all to me. I'll give mine all to you. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose, I'm winning. 'Cause I give you all of me, and you give me. How many times do I have to tell you? Even when you're crying, you're beautiful too. The world is beating you down. I'm around through every move. You're my downfall. You're my muse, my worst distraction, my rhythm and blues. I can't stop singing. It's ringing in my head just for you. My head's underwater, but I'm breathing fine. You're crazy, and I'm just out of my mind. 'Cause all of me, it loves all of you. Love your curves and all your edges, all your perfect imperfections. Give your All to me, I'll give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose, I'm winning. 'Cause I give you all of me, and you give me all of you. 'Cause I give you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Jeremy Redmore performing a cover of John Legend's All of Me. We gave him three minutes to prepare that song. That was absolutely superb. Round of applause one more time. Thank you. I thought you were going to say we gave him three out of ten. No, no. <laughs> People have texted in saying that your version's better than John Legend's version. People, so that is some big compliments pe- coming through. People have texted in uh, marriage proposals even. Yeah. They've got, that's a little <laughs> bit extreme, up. I'm going to be honest with you. And we've got some people on the phone as well. Jamie, what did you want to say to Jeremy? I just want to say that I was like fall in love with him. Uh, <laughs> you fall in love. Well, you better get up here. He's going to be here for the five minutes. Maybe you can serenade him on the way out. It's good. To I'll get far away for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Awesome. Well, the ladies are loving it. Jordan, what did what did you think of Jeremy's performance? I nearly cried. I swear, I nearly cried. What? This is the second lady that's almost cried this afternoon. Were you crying? You? Oh, were you, so sorry. Were you crying? <laughs> were, you, were you crying because of the song or just general life problems? That's so beautiful. Oh, lovely. Aww, that's Ger- a warm and fuzzy for a Monday. Jeremy, it's all girls. Are you single at the moment? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm playing it cool, man. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Keep like, playing it cool, bro. Cool. He's yeah. chipping okay. away. He's chipping away. Natasha, you've got a question for Jeremy. What is it? Question. Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, you haven't, you, you've even seen me on TV. I mean, when Edge TV launches, you'll actually see me, and you might, might question that decision. <laughs> Seamless plug to Edge TV. We've just found our first song to add to the playlist. Jeremy Redmore, everybody. Thank you so much for coming in, man. Thank Woo-hoo! you. And, and don't forget his new single, which you heard exclusively first here before Run Run. It's going to be on iTunes this Friday, so go and pick it Guy, up. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the Edge. Hey, Clint, can we talk about Alice? Alice. Who the zealous? Because <laughs> of that song, when it was like, I'm, I'm really worried right now. Partly from that maniacal laugh. But what, what did you think about? Partly because I'm worried at what you guys are going to say now. Don't you know what, what did you think about? about? What do you think about our auditioned joke? Do you want us to do it again? Okay, yeah, hang on. Practice yeah. joke. Okay, no, I'm heard. <clears throat> You're on the edge. Something, something. Jitsky Safari. Guy Sharon and Clint. Hey Clint, would hey, you like to up? talk about Alice? 
Alice? Who the f- is Alice? That girl that sent the menu over to Guy on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> we were out to dinner on Friday night. And Don't talk we- about this. <laughs> It was the funniest thing. No one wants to hear about this. It was the three of us, my husband and Clint's girlfriend and... Lonely guy. Lonely guy. Lonely. He's so lonely. Yeah, don't need to rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> Old fifth wheel William. And then all of a sudden... I made sudden, a good fifth wheel. All of a sudden... Out of the blue, a waitress comes over with a menu for the restaurant where that we're at <laughs> that had been personalised by a girl across the bar. I don't know why we're laughing at you. This is like big ups to you, bro. Yeah, oh, she'd, sent, she'd sent over a, um, a pickup menu and she'd written on this menu, she'd written um, uh, her name, her phone number. Her name was Alice. Um, her phone number. Her phone number was 021. Shh, three, um, don't. And then she'd said, call me for a laugh. And then she'd personalise the menu. So, like, the place was called um, Bedford, and she'd circled bed, and they do meatballs there, and it had Bedford balls, and she'd circled balls. And then it had, like, um, she'd circled sauce, I don't know why. Oh, for the meatballs, and you had to choose your base, and she'd circled base, and she'd written beside it, maybe second, so maybe second base. And then she'd circled dessert, and she'd gone, equals me. So it was real cute and real personalised. It was lovely. Unfortunately... I'm taken. But at the same time, I'm going to text you later. So I love you, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just wanted to know, did you, did you contact her? No, I didn't, take, I didn't take the number down. But I was extremely flattened slash red in the face because Clint and Sharon are going to tease me about this, perhaps for the rest of my entire life. Well, actually, so as you run on our Facebook page. So if you want to see this menu, then just go to the Guy, Sharon and Clint Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash edge afternoons. If you scroll down a little bit, you actually, I'll pin it to the top so it's easy to find. Hey, uh, we want everyone to see this. If your name is Alice, if you were the Alice from the bar, we'd love to talk to you. Feel free to flick an email to producer Chang, chang at theedge.co.nz. I'm, I'm not that keen on talking to her, to be honest. <laughs> Although I'm stoked, though. Don't get me wrong. It was so flattering. It was funny. And you can go and see that picture on our Facebook page. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Edge. Gossip. Gossip. Scandal. Romance. Romance. Sexy. 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 News. News. Clint and the Glossies. Good evening and welcome to Clinton the Glossies. Every week, Clint summarises the best of celebrity gossip so you don't have to bother reading it, duh. This week's feature will um, cover three glossy magazines as usual. Good. But at the end, I will table a conversation piece. Oh. Ooh. Which we can all partake in, including you, lovely listener friend. Oh, exciting. So we're going to start this week of Clinton the Glossies with the Woman's Day. This week, the Woman's Day is celebrating their 25th birthday, everybody. Happy birthday, Woman's Day. Happy oh, birthday, birthday to you. They've profiled 20 yeah. women that they love, uh, including friend of the show, Rose Matafeo. She's in there. She's she, sold out. Can she, I please she point looks, out, yeah. she has got a smoking hot body. I'm glad you bring that up, because that is one of the points of Clinton the Glossies today. She looks incredible, but I want to know if this is a backhanded compliment from the Women's Day. Their caption was, who knew Rose had such a killer figure? Is that a backhanded compliment? Like, backhanded compliment. Oh, we always thought you were a bit chunky. Snarky stab. She honestly looks ridiculously hot in that, and so does Frankie from Shorten Street, who plays Ola. The next magazine is NW. NW is all about people with foreign items inside themselves this week. Ooh. Uh, Miley's butt implants. Courtney loves no. ex- Courtney loves extreme boob extreme boob job, which is actually pretty horrific when you see it. Oh, that, boob job. Is that how she looks at the moment? Yeah, that's her boob job. Like- she looks like she literally has has two base basketballs they on look her like chest. Swiss balls. She looks like two airbags have gone off in her face. Um, and a Kardashian pregnancy bombshell. Apparently Kendall Jenner is pregnant because <gasps> they took a photo of her and she was holding onto her stomach. So like, oh, must Uh-oh. be pregnant. <laughs> and the last magazine we're going to this week is the uh, classic edition of Lucky Break, the magazine with the most misleading headline uh, title of all name. Uh, Lucky Break. They murdered my daughter and got away with it. What? Lucky break. My fiancé had four secret babies with four women. And finally, today's conversation piece, Lucky break, Kiwi Confession Edition. I made my best friend fat. That's one of the what? stories in that in Lucky Break this week. Someone fed their friend until they got real fat. Yeah, so I thought our conversation piece in today's Clinton the Glossies could be, have you ever made someone else fat? 
whether intentionally, unintentionally, as a prank to get back at them because they were so comfortable with you. Sharon? It's kind of like Mean Girls, what they, what they did to Regina George yeah. by uh, making her eat protein bars, but they were actually just like full-on carb bars. Yeah. I haven't on purpose, but I have had a boyfriend in the past who was passed who was ripped to shreds when we got together, and by the time we broke up, he was no longer ripped to shreds because he sat at my house all the time. Because you fattened him up. Well, I ate McDonald's all the time, and Wendy's was down the road, so he ended up putting it on. Welcome to the good life. I can't believe you didn't do the topic, they murdered my daughter and got away with it. But anyway, this is better. This is more wholesome. <laughs> it's from the text machine, which happens to be blowing up. My flatmate... Ruined my diet one day by telling me what I was eating was sugar-free and fat-free. Lol, he was working at the gym, so I believed him. But no, it was a calorie bomb, and I put on 10 kgs. <laughs> 10 kgs just from one dessert? Unbelievable. No, from no, constantly no, eating. Oh, he, was, right. he was teasing her. My partner made me fat. He has a medical condition, so he can't put on weight. Man, that would be an amazing medical condition I to have. I wish I had that. No, actually, that, that's probably got some bad side effects. So I, yeah, and none of you wanted to put on weight. Okay, yeah, good point. Um, but doctors told him to eat high fat and salty foods because he has trouble absorbing it. So he's constantly eating. Also, he's a chef, so he makes fantastic food. That's actually my worst nightmare, eh? Yeah. If he's just constantly chowing down anything and he just sheds it all off. It's oh. a delicious way to go, though. Ellie, you made your boyfriend fat, didn't you? How did this work? Oh, yeah, I just did it out of laziness. He was always going to the gym. He had just lost 30 kgs as well, and Aww. I started dating him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was just lazy, and I was like, no, don't go to the gym. Let's just stay in and get pizza instead. So how much weight did he put back on since he started dating you, Ellie? Oh, he put back on half of it, so he put on a good 15 kgs Aww. after dating me. <laughs> that poor guy. Oh, good effort. Now, nah, Ellie, people always lose about twice as much as they need to anyway. You probably helped him find his healthy weight again. Maybe. You've probably helped him find his pizza weight. Well, now it's the opposite, because now I'm trying to get fit and go to the gym, and I can't do anything to make him be healthy again. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's a double-edged sword, Ellie, double-edged sword. Connor, first of all, who got you fat? Uh, my girlfriend. And how did she get you fat? Um, well, when we got together, I was about 90 kilos, and I'm like six foot six. Yeah. And then I put on about 40 kilos, so 130. Whoa! You put on 40 kilos? 40 kilos. From 90, that's almost half your weight. Good maths, Clint, I know. But still, that's heaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, was, we, it was heaps. Was she trying to fatten you up, or was she just feeding you all the time? How did this happen? <laughs> no, it just went to kind of... I went from not eating much food at all to eating regular meals, really, and I just got a bit silly. Wow. So have you had to lose that 40 kilos now, or are you still carrying it around? Um, no, I'm not. I'm sitting at about 115 now, which is, is good. We're working on it. <laughs> that is amazing, Connor. <laughs> oh, well, good luck. Yeah. And, um, man, she must be a real good cook. <laughs> she is. She is. Yeah. Sounds, sounds pretty luxurious, though. Sounds like a good way to get fat. Just eat heaps with your missus. Yeah. Sounds delicious. <laughs> All right, thank you for your calls, thank you for your text messages. I'm going to continue on my secret plan of fattening up Guy Williams. Good the way night. it works is every time you offer him food, just say, how much better would that be between two bits of white bread? <laughs> Yum. Do you know what we found out on Friday night? What? Because Guy was sitting next to Kim.com, and they're oh, pretty yeah, much yeah, the yeah, same yeah. height, Yeah. that when Guy is 20 years older and has let himself go, he's going to look like Kim.com. <laughs> No lie. Go look at a photo oh of both God. of them together and it's you'll true. see it. You are going to no! be... Guy, Sharon and Clint. There you go. There's a podcast. Can I... If you listen to the whole thing yeah. and you heard the intro, can I have a second to as a right of reply? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> no. no, you can. You can. The way you painted me, the way you painted me in the start yeah. was less of an atheist and more of like a... Um, Satan. Satan. Yeah, you're Satan. <laughs> yeah, devil worshipper. <laughs> well, Satanist. Stop, stop wearing coats that reveal your little red spiky tail. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Clint is, um, Clint is shaved with a skinhead and he has 666 <laughs> on his forehead. That's not me at all. And he's I wearing just... a big satin red cape. It's weird. Why would you wear that? It's not even fashion. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Why did you 
bring a fork. Don't to swear me. on the podcast, Why mate. It's going to hell sooner. Why did you bring a giant fork? Hey, Clint. Remember, remember, <laughs> remember when um, it was like a running gag for like six months that I was addicted to strip clubs. Well, yeah. you got you better. You got better. So we stopped talking about it. Yeah, what well, goes maybe, around goes around, coming back around. Maybe one again. day you'll feel better when Jesus sweet water. Um, rolls over your face and you are christened and reborn. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Seriously, Clint, you've got you've got you've got you've got twenty seconds to redeem yourself before we cut out the podcast. Okay, go, yeah. go. One. <clears> two. I don't hate religion. I just think it's two thousand and fourteen, and we've got this little thing called science now. So you don't need to look in that little book anymore that made up all the answers. Just use science, bro. It's all good. There's a real good Facebook page called I F and Love Science, and it makes science accessible to everybody. So check it out, man. It's got a lot of answers. And- <laughs> That was actually, you nailed that. That was really impressive. I believe I believe it was Jesus that guided you to that answer. <laughs> See you later. The Guys Sharon and Clint Podcast.